right, all right. Uh, let me say hi to everybody. It's Ron Jackson, and I hope you could you could have heard that. Um, I have a new computer. My computer crashed today, uh, yesterday, and I've been trying to work on this thing, so I'm trying to get my good sound back. And I um, hope you could hear my guitar nice and clear. And um, I'm going to be talking about um, easier Giant Steps riffs today. So, um, before I keep going, everybody, please, please um, subscribe to me if you don't already. Or please follow me everywhere at Ron Jackson Music. And um, so I was playing Giant Steps and I was playing some of my licks that I know. Like the first lick you see up there on, you know, on the uh, graphic, it's it's actually um, some of my shortcuts to play over giant steps. Okay. And please uh, send a comment if you're listening and to see if um, you can, uh, you know, follow me and hear me with no problems and issues. Okay. So, um, you know, giant steps is like one of these songs that everybody wants to learn, wants to play. I, I have no idea really why, but it's really, uh, you know, the harmonization, the, re the harmonization of Giant Steps is really um, interesting to me um, and interesting to everybody. They seem, you know, everybody seems to want to play this. So when I'm playing this, so J uh, John Coltrane, you know, you should uh, actually know why John Coltrane came up with this. He actually took the octave and he used this book called the Slomninsky Method. Right here, I'll show you. He used this book, everybody. Um, it's by Nicholas Slom Slon Nimsky. It's kind of weird, Slon Nimsky. And he was a composer, and um, and he actually um, Coltrane took this and um, used one of his uh, ways of dividing the octave into three equal parts, and they call it the diatone system. So he basically um, is is taking the um taking a major chord like a B, so in in um giant steps we actually play in the key of um of actually um E flat. They, he ends on E flat. You know uh, the the last part so it goes okay, and what happens is um Coltrane took the E flat major chord and divided it into a, an augmented chord, which is E flat, G, and um, E flat, G, and B, which is um, actually like um, an A sharp, if you want to do the call, or no, sorry, a, a B natural, okay? Or if you're going from the key of B, it's B, D sharp, and G. Depending where you start that, it'll be G, in the key of G will be G, B, and D sharp. Okay, that's an augmented chord everywhere. So the augmented chord covers three different keys. You should know your augmented chords really well as, as well as other chords. So Coltrane created like 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 this, cold, they call it Coltrane changes. Basically, giant steps is just go through those three different keys. It starts on a B major seven, five, seven, of the G, now you're in the key of G, the second part of the chord, and then five seven of the E flat, which is B flat. So it starts off on B, B D seven, G major seven, B flat seven, E flat major seven. Then he does a two five to the key of G, it does the same thing from G, the same pattern. G major, five seven of the E flat, E flat major seven. F sharp dominant seven five seven of the B key of B. He goes to the B major seven and then he goes to the cycle again, but he just does two fives to every key. So he goes uh, F minor seven to B flat seven to E flat major seven, A minor seven to D seven to G major seven, C sharp minor seven to F sharp dominant seven to B flat major seven. Then starts again. F minor seven to B flat seven to E flat major seven. Then goes back to the top. Does a two five. C sharp minor seven flat. Five, I mean C sharp minor seven to F sharp dominant seven back to the top. That's a lot of chords to say out loud, everybody. So the chords go like this.
No, you should be able to play this all over the fingerboard when you're playing guitar. Just the chords. Now, you know, that's kind of difficult to do already. So I'll practice it everywhere. I'll go like this. So I stay in the same position. I'm only in the first uh, um, five frets of the guitar. this so I'm trying to stay in this area so you really learn the fingerboard then you go up again next part so I can go like this Good exercise. Then E flat. Oops. So you can stay here. See how everywhere I'm playing that the chords, the giant set, everywhere. So you know. Um, so I, you know, um, so you have to really practice giant steps every possible way to play the chords because when you're playing jazz, you have to be able to play over the changes. So that's a really good exercise to learn from the great uh, guitar teacher named Ted Dunbar. You have to be able to play your chords in one area, so you can play, so you can learn how to play all over the neck. Play. Oh, it's not dead. It's hard to play giant steps and talk to you guys. <laughs> but anyway, so so I have these easier giant step giant steps riffs that I can I'm going to show you um, how to play today, and you can actually get the music at RonnieMusicLabel.com. And um, you know I've sold quite a few of these. Um, basically, they're my shortcuts through giant steps that I've learned, I've made up myself, and also um, that I've learned from other students that I've taught. So one good one good way to do this is, uh, well, first John Coltrane just played a one, two, three, five pattern over giant steps the whole time. He would go like this. So these are one, two, three, five patterns on the B major seven. He would go, he would go B, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp. Okay, one, two, three, five, which is the major, you know, if, if you're playing a, a B major scale, it's a lot of notes here with sharps, but anyway, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. So the one is B, two is um, the C sharp, three is um, the uh, D sharp, and the five is F sharp. So he would do that pattern and play through all the chords. That, you know, back in the, uh, is that the early 60s? I can't remember. When was Giant Steps composed? Um, I'll look, I'll show you this. So, so here's Giant Steps right here. Um, so he composed that in um, the, what year was that? Well, it says 1974 here, but I think maybe it was 30 years before. But he composed that maybe in the late 50s, early 60s, Giant Steps, everybody. So, um. You know, back then to play something like that was like unheard of, because you know, it was people were just trying to still learn how to play bebop and postmodern bebop. So he was doing all this crazy stuff, and I heard that you know Tommy Flanagan, the piano player on the record date for Giant Steps, was like, you could hear him like he was struggling because he, he never played a song like that before, and, and nobody played a song like that before. So Coltrane got through this with the one, two, three, five patterns. If you listen to his solo, he goes like this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he didn't do that the whole time, but that was basically what he did. And that's actually the easiest way, but that's still not easy to do because I'm only playing a really, really, really basic pattern here. 
And I have this other book uh, over here by Jerry Bargonzi where it covers all those Coltrane patterns. You should check that book out too, you know, as, as well as my patterns. And basically, Jerry, you, you, when you do a one, two, three, five pattern, that pattern, you could do that 24 different ways. I'm just going from one, two, three, five. See what I did? And then, but actually, you can do, you can actually play that. You can go like this. You can go backward. See that? See that? See what I did? So I don't know that pattern as well. It's much easier to go from the root up. But I could go, instead of going one, two, three, five, I could go, I can go two, one, three, five, and then play that through the changes. Or, see that? And then I would go, um, I would go from there. So watch this. See, that's hard. That's one I don't know as well. And then I can go, I can go. I can go. That's a tricky one. So that's a really hard one. So I mean, so you can mix them all up, you know, like. So I go. So, so that's the hard part of playing these Coltrane changes. Just playing one, two, three, five patterns. You got to find a, a unique way of playing those because everybody kind of plays them the same. Like Coltrane just went. That's easier. Now that's a good te technique to be able to play through, uh, uh, you know, chord changes in general. But you got to make it more creative by not just playing from the root up. You know, and what happens to a lot of guitar players, myself included, if you don't know how to play the pattern well, you just play from the root. See that? So what you know, it's even hard to do the the basic one like that, okay? So my shortcut, my first shortcut is I found this lick right here. The very first one that you see on there. It goes like this. That's the very first one I have written out there. Okay? So that's the first giant step lick that I go. So what I do is I go down. It's a one, two, three, five pattern backwards. Then I went on the D7, I went to the seventh, to the nine, to the, uh, uh, well, to the, to the nine, to the um, root, to the flat seven. I do the same thing on the B flat seven. So it goes like this. And then I'll go to the next one, the same thing. So the next one is this one. one so 
I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to actually play the recording with that so you can hear slowly, okay? Um, so you're going to hear that first pattern, and then uh, it's just the first four bars, remember that. Then you can do one, two, three, five patterns after. So I'll put the mic in front of me. Here we go. <laughs> Not asking any questions. So, what I did was, I played through those changes. I varied them a little bit, you know, um, just so you can see. It's just really an exercise for you to get through the changes. So that's the first easy giant step riff. So the first part of the song is easy. I mean, you know, and the rest of it's not easy too because you're going through all these key changes, playing two fives. You know, it goes like this. The next part is just. Two fives. And I, I, I know for a lot of guitar players who don't play jazz much, maybe, um, that might be difficult for you guys to do. Okay, uh, I want to slow the tempo down a little bit here. Hold on. So always practice, you know, these, these, these songs much slower. Now, I have another one that goes like this. Okay, it goes like this. It goes like this. It looks like it's going up. The the, the the lick is going up. Goes up to the one, two, three, five. And then when it gets to D7. So that's a cool sounding lick too. Hear that? So it goes to the sus. Then I go up to the G. So if I play that slow, let me play it for you with the recording. I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Watch this. Here's the recording again. So those, that's the new, that's the uh, new, new um, riff, okay? And um, so that riff is basically just goes through the change, but it, but it ascends. It's a little, it's a little trickier than the last one. So what, what happens is you're doing the same pattern, okay? And then you're gonna go up a whole. So that's the first four bars of giant steps. That's my second easy, um, easier giant step riffs. Okay, riff, and that that's not easy to play actually easier. The next one is the same kind of thing. You can go like this. I have this written like this. See, watch this. See that one? That's the second one. So let me play that from the beginning again. That same riff, number two. Here we go. Let me slow it down just a little bit.
that's a cool riff. If you have any questions, everybody, please, please, please ask, okay? And um, please ask me because, I mean, I like to get some feedback. And also, if you're, if you're not following me or subscribe to me, please subscribe to me now. So these are easier giant steps riffs that I wrote that's on my website. You can go get that right now. Also, if you want, just go to my website too, and I have a freebie lesson up there. You have to look for it. There's a free lesson on my website, but you can also get this lesson at my website right now called Easier Giant Step Riffs. Giant Steps Riffs. Guitar Riffs, actually. Easier Giant Steps Guitar Riffs. You know, and these are not easy. Nothing's easy with Giant Steps, but you know what? Everybody seems to want to play Giant Steps. I don't know why. Even me. So I have another one here. Check this out. Um, so I have a few more of these Easier Giant Steps Riffs. So, um, another one is this one. Um, let me show you. So, another one is this one. Like this. <coughs> what I did was, I ascended up the neck. I did the same pattern going up. Now that's easy to play, easier to play. What I did was I went to B flat, B major seven to the D seven. On the D seven, I did kind of a two five lick. It's more of like an A minor arpeggio on the D seven. Then I went to the one two three five pattern of the G major seven. Then I hit the F minor on the, the related two of the B flat seven. And then I did it like an F minor. Actually, it's just a backwards one, two, three, five pattern on F minor as well. C, A flat, G, and F. Then I went one, two, three, five. So it goes like this. See that? Okay, and then that's the second pattern. The second easier giant steps riff. Now, learn this now, everybody. The next one is the same kind of thing and over the G major, like the, the second part of the song. Going to be G major 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7, the F sharp dominant 7, to B major 7. The next part goes like this. So that's tricky, too. I can go like this too. I can go. Okay. So let me play that for you now so you can see what it sounds like real slow. So, everybody, um, oh, there's a comment here. Let me see what that comment is. Hi. Hey, Robert. Great to see you, Robert. My friend Robert. I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope you've been busy playing music. Um, I'm here on a crazy rainy day in New York, and it's like, uh, I don't think I can drive right now in this rain, but anyway, let me continue with my Giant Steps riffs. Thanks, Robert, for watching, everybody, and if you're enjoying this, please, please, um, I accept Super Chat here, as well as, I don't know what, the, what it is on Facebook, but I'm on, I'm actually live on Facebook, um, uh, what is it, um, Twitch, actually, and um, YouTube, okay, everybody? So, please follow me if you don't, and um, et cetera. So, let me play you this link right now. I got to make sure I'm looking at this carefully because this is a little tricky. <laughs> let me see. Here we go. I'm going to put the mic over here.
So that that's the second mm -hmm. giant steps riff. Goes like this. Okay, you got that. And then the next one is. Okay, now the next one is tricky. It goes like this. But it's actually pretty easy to play. Hear that? So that's the, uh, it's like a 2A version of that, okay? So listen to this with that, with the, uh, and then it does the same thing in the key of G. It's kind of an easy pattern. It goes. Hear that? So I'm going up that same pattern, going up at one fret, then two frets to get to E flat. So listen to this phrase now. Here we go. So remember, I'm only playing the first, um, how many bars is that? Let me look at Giant Steps. That's the first eight bars. Remember, Giant Steps is only 16 bars long. So if you look carefully at Giant Steps, take a look at that. I'm only playing the first four bars, or 16, oh, eight bars actually, excuse me, because those that's the hardest part of the song. Now, if you're an advanced jazz player, you should be able to play those two fives, the rest of the song, the rest of the last eight bars, um, with no problems. You should you should be able to do that, no problem. But other, you know, because um, that's really basic stuff on jazz, is two fives, even though it's not that easy either. Okay, so um, what I did was I just took a line, I made up my own line, I made some shortcuts because when I'm playing this. You know, you could just make it sound like an exercise, but this is kind of an exercise too, but I can maybe... I can, I can do that. I can do that. So when I'm playing through the change, I can go... Do something a little bit more interesting in my soloing, okay? Instead of playing like this... See that? See what I did? Because so, that's the way Coltrane played it. Like that, you see it? That's how Coltrane played it, okay? Now you can use the same pattern actually on, on the um, two fives, the rest of the song. See, it sounds just like an exercise to me. That's the problem. So when I'm actually playing through the giant steps, I try to play these cool patterns that I have that that uh, no one really plays except me. And then I show them to my students. So here's some other patterns, too, that I use. Here's a descending one I like to use. So it goes backwards. It starts like this, way up high. It goes like this. Now, 
I'm only going from the um, I'm actually doing a one, two, three, five pattern backwards. Five, three, two, one. Then I went to the on the D7, I'm playing the A minor arpeggio. I learned this from a student of mine, actually. So it's actually a B. Then when I go down, you go down in whole steps every two frets on the guitar. And you go to major, the minor, then major, then minor. Okay. That's the first four bars, and you do the two five. Okay. Then you start on G, you go to two five to G. Then you're going to go down in whole steps from G. The same kind of pattern. G, F minor, B flat, C sharp minor, to B, okay? You hear that? So what I did is I just did a lick like that. It's easy because you could you could play symmetrical down the guitar neck. See that? And then. So I can do that. I can So I can mix that up, actually. I'm just going like this. I wrote this pattern like this. So what I did, I just played that. It's really easy to play. It looks hard, and it sounds hard, but... So here's what it sounds like. Now, I'm going to play through the song a little bit for fun now, but I'm going to use that pattern, but you have to switch it up. You can't be playing these my riffs or anybody's riffs um, just the same way all the time. It starts to sound really boring. So if you have any questions about Giant Steps, about Giant Steps, my easier Giant Steps riffs, please ask me. I'm showing you all of them right now, but you can pick them up. On my, at, at my store at RonnieMusicLabel.com, R-O-N-I-M-U-S-I-C, which you see at the very bottom there. And um, for, your own, for your own copy, you know, a lot of other cool lessons and books and merch like this T-shirt, my six-string Guitar Heroes T-shirt, etc. Check this out. Okay. So you heard that, everybody? Now I'm going to put that a little bit faster. Uh, before I do that, though, let me show you my last Giant Steps riffs before I finish up. So, again, thank you for watching, everybody. So I'm going to play Giant Steps for real after, you know, um, like I'm playing it normally on a gig. I'll put it up tempo for you and then uh, try to break my neck trying to play through these chord changes. Another lick I like to use is this one. It goes like this. Um, let me show you. So I just do, I do the same thing. It's the same pattern, but I go like this one. I'm 
just going, it's really easy. I'm just doing the same pattern, but I'm going up this time. Your goal is to mix it up. So that same pattern, I was playing like this. Okay, it's a whole, whole step, but this time it's, go, this time it's whole steps go, going down again, but playing the pattern up. So I'm going one, two, three, five, one, two, flat, three, five, etc. See what I did? So that's tricky, everybody. Um, so let me play you this for real, like a, just like a, like the like the Coltrane tempo. Um, so I'm at 91 right now. I suggest you know learning this at least at 120 uh, half note. No, let me see how fast this is. That's kind of slow still. So let me do like um, let me do 240. So that's a fast tempo. So let me show you. So let me put the mic here so you can hear that. So let me get ready here. Here we go. Giant step. Fast. <laughs> That's crazy. No, it's not crazy. Mm -hmm. um, just so you know, uh, I haven't played jazz steps in a while, so it's a good, good practice, a good exercise. Hey, giant steps are what Ron takes walking on the moon. <laughs> You're funny. I love my friend Jeff, man. Jeff's been following me for a long time. Big fan of mine. So is Robert. Thank you guys for watching. So, you know what? So, pick up my Giant Steps um, Easier Riffs on my website. Please follow me. You can watch this video after. You know, uh, I was doing this live, so it's tricky to play everything perfect live, but I'd rather do it live than do all this fancy. 
and um, you know fix everything because you know what we're human and uh, you got to be able to do this stuff live in person when you're playing a gig so so when I'm playing this stuff this is tricky there's a lot of notes to play I was playing uh, at 240 um, quarter note which is about 120 which is not that fast in jazz I mean for this song it can be fast because it's kind of fast but let me put it up a little bit faster so you can see how tricky this can be. I gotta really concentrate because um, I haven't played this song in so long, like like at that tempo. So let me show you. Let me do a tempo that's kind of like a little bit faster, which is this is a tricky tempo, 285. Let's say make it. Let's make it two, 280. So this is fast, everybody. Uh, 280. Here we go. So oh hey, Giant says is what? Oh yeah, thank you guys. I missed your gig at Alex Gorga City Vineyard. Oh no, next time, next time. Uh, uh, Robert missed my gig at City Vineyard. Oh, sorry, it was a great gig with with um, Alex Skolnick, man. But next time, I'm playing this Sunday, everybody, at um, at the um, St. Peter's Church tomorrow, Jazz Vespers. So come and check it out. We're gonna be playing some cool. Um, Jazzy versions of some gospel tunes. Check this out, though. Here's Giant Steps at 240. Let me get ready. Start again. Okay, got some breakneck giant stuff. So you know what? That was actually pretty fast. You could play even faster than that, actually, guys. <laughs> so that was pretty. That was pretty. That was a 240, 140 half note, 280. Sorry. So I could be practicing this all day and still work on stuff. So, you know, I like to do it a little bit slower than that. But, you know, people call those songs on my gigs sometimes. I'll be like, oh, God, you know, I'm not. And sometimes I'm not, I'm not even warmed up. I haven't played Giant Steps in like in two months or something. So thanks, everybody, for following me. So these are my Giant Steps shortcuts, you know. So remember these cool licks. You can go like this. 
You can go like this. Uh, this one's like this. This one. That's a good one for the first two bars at that tempo. So you have to press the mirror. So that works on the first uh, 16 bars. Oh, so first eight bars of Giant Steps. So you can play that lick everywhere. Then you have to know a bunch of two fives or um, patterns and stuff like that for the rest of the song, for the last eight bars. And you can play everything about one, two, three, five patterns on Giant Steps, like, like John Corden. See that? So you can play giant steps through a ho that whole way. See that? You can play everywhere. See that? But it sounds like an exercise when you do it that way, but that's how you get this together really quickly on giant steps so thank you everybody so please subscribe to me if you don't already please follow me please check out my live and recorded and um you know my content everywhere um at ron jackson music if you want to support my channel i uh, i accept super chats here on youtube and um you know i have these options here as well check out my website of course for this lesson and I have these other options if you want to check out, if, if you want to do, uh, donate. Oh, that's not my, that's a wrong, wrong banner, old banner. <laughs> if you enjoyed my live stream, uh, you know, please donate. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. Everything is at Ron Jackson Music. You can find me everywhere, Ron Jackson Music, Venmo, anything like that. Again, please follow me, and uh, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate my friend Robert. And, um. Uh, where are you playing? I'm playing Sunday. So Robert's asking me where am I playing Sunday. I'm playing at St. Peter's Church. I'm going to send you um, an email right now. I'll, I'll play it right now. It's 5 p.m. I'm going to put this right now in my in my um, chat. 5 p.m. St. Peter's Church um, in Manhattan. Tomorrow, Sunday. Okay. Uh, St. Peter's, Peter's Church, okay, um, it's going to be a great band, um, okay, we do one hour, remember that, and it's free, this Sunday, St. Peter's Church, New York City, Jazz Vespers, it's a famous jazz church, okay, uh, New York City, come by, Sunday, tomorrow, Sunday, um, three, slash 24 okay i'm going to send that to you guys right now so you can see that right now everybody if you want to come see my show at uh st peter's church tomorrow it's going to be a great band my trio we're going to be playing cool gospel tunes and stuff like that with um you know with a jazz feel okay so thank you everybody for watching my easier giant steps riffs and i'll see you guys very soon okay and have a great day Bye bye